classic moment in FGA history when nobody was expecting it. <laughs> and then our founding pastor. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Chris. I'm the senior pastor here at FGA Melbourne. If you're visiting, it's so good uh, to see you here. Uh, we're today celebrating actually um, 27 years of history with our founding pastor and his wife. It's, uh, it's actually taken us 10 months after they retired to, for them to agree to have a celebration service even. Um, and it's my real honor and privilege to be speaking uh, today. Uh, we're going to finish at 11.45, and then we're going to have food together. Uh, and so I'm going to try and keep this as tight uh, as I possibly can. Actually, I'll finish a little bit earlier, I think. Um, so I, I wonder if you caught from today's service that actually we've very deliberately tried to bring out just the very ordinary day-to-day -day responses uh, to Pastor Ron and Auntie Evelyn, uh, some very real stories that have just been told um, around. There's many ways you can do a celebration service, but um, I think the way we've tried to craft today is to bring out the, the fact, actually, that Pastor Ron and Evelyn are just very ordinary, regular people like us, but followers of Christ, followers of Christ. I'm going to have to get somebody to set this thing up um, for me. Thank you. Great. You know, to me, they will always be uncle and auntie. Uncle and auntie. You know, in fact, we got, you know, you, you may not know this, but we had this list of all the criteria for pastoral and auntie, and you wondered, oh, how did we even come up with that short list? We asked your children. We asked your children, and then and we just populated the list of the, what they thought your categories were, and then we just saw where everybody um, placed you. I'm pretty sure clean would have come up <laughs> higher. If it were up to me, clean. I still remember Pastor Ron. I, I would work for him as the kids' pastor, and kids' pastors are very messy. Let me just tell you. We have one of those here today. <laughs> yeah, all right? And he would come in. He would call me for a meeting, but instead of me going into his office for a meeting, he would come to my office for a meeting. And then, in a meeting with me and telling me the things that I was supposed to do as his kid's pastor, as he's telling me all these things, he would clean my room. My office would get cleaner as we had the meeting. And then he would leave. And I'd be like, oh, wow, that was a great... It was a great meeting with my boss because I've always wanted to tidy up and now we are done. Now we are done. My, my goodness. Um, you know, uh, uh, Uncle Roland and Auntie Eve, uh, they brought me to Christ when I was just a kid. I've had the unique privilege of seeing behind the scenes, not just what goes on off stage on a Sunday, but also what happens with the family uh, and at home. So today, if I could, I'm going to talk about them and orient this message um, towards them being ordinary people who are disciples of Christ. You know, that word ordinary, I, I, I looked it up, is customary, regular, usual, orderly. That means a usual, regular disciple of Christ. Because if they are just ordinary, that means customary for what a disciple of Christ should be. Customary. An ordinary, regular, usual, if we define the word correctly, the usual disciple of Christ. Then you and me, every single one of us here, with access to the same amount of time, the same 24 hours in a day, equal access to Jesus Christ, uh, access to the Holy Spirit in relationship with God the Father, then all of us 
can actually learn something from the two of them, grow closer to Christ from this experience. But if we sit here today and this celebration service, and I know this is not Pastor Roland and Auntie Eve's heart, but if we sit here today and we go, my goodness, these two people, they are so amazing. In my entire life, I will never do anything as godly or as Christ-like as they do, then I think you've missed the point of their entire focus of ministry. So let's keep it real, because I have seen Pastor Roland get weary. In fact, I still remember being in church, and we went through an entire season, maybe even like two years, I want to say, but it felt like two years, of he would come up and preach on Sunday and just go, oh, I'm very tired. I'm very weary. And you know, pastoring the church is so burdensome. It's so tiring. And then after every one of those sermons, the leadership team would get up past, to Pastor Ron and pull him aside. Pastor Ron, you cannot preach messages like that. You cannot say things like this. this is Nobody's going to come to our church. But he would just keep it real. He was just like, that's what's happening with me. This is what life is like. We're trying to follow Christ. And this is where we are. I've seen Auntie Eve get upset. My goodness, I have definitely, you know, you know um, I have seen them as a couple weather storms like you would not believe. Some of these storms so heartbreaking that it has taken them years to recover. And some that I know of still hurt today. Uh, I want to give you a glimpse of the kind of things that lets you imagine that uh, it just is a breeze or that it is just something so fantastical to be pastoring a church and to have done 40 years, around 40 years of ministry. Um, I want to give you a glimpse of, uh, you know, Pastor Roland finished his last message at FGA uh, with this slide, this exact slide, classic Uncle Roland. <laughs> duties of a pastor. So classic Uncle Roland, right? His final message. And he's like, okay, guys, let me tell you all the things that I've done, right? And so he's like, okay, I've been preaching. I've prepared teaching material, I've conducted wedding, wedding rehearsals. I've done funerals, baby dedications, baptism, baptism class, classes. I've conducted house blessings and cleansing. And just in case you think that's the final slide, there's another slide. I've done personal ministry counseling. I run leadership meetings. I oversee the running of ministries, right? I organize events. I lead mission trips all around the world. I oversee mercy, welfare, outreach, work. And then there's another slide. And I attend to emergencies in hospitals. I visit people. All right, I resolve that this was a 40-minute sermon, right? Uh, conflict situations. I pray for the sick. I have to handle church discipline. When people are not behaving well, right, and they like, complain to the pastor, I got to call them up and go, hey, this is not Christ-like. And then there's another side. He does hospitality. He does mentoring. He assists with job placements. You know, like, if you're a migrant, you come in here, he'll help you, like, get a job, building issues, right? Attend various functions, follow up new visitors. And then there's a the final slide. <laughs> He takes phone calls, messages, deals with HR issues because, you know, you're running a staff team. You oversee financial status of the church. There's the denomination that we're going to deal with, inter-church relationship, ACM, ICC, White House Churches Care. He looks after the church plants that he's had, missionaries. They run the 10 prayer meetings. And we haven't even gotten to all the things that Auntie Eve has done. Free of charge in support of this man. And so I want you to consider just, if you could, we all just put ourselves in their shoes, right? Of just, my, my goodness, you've got somebody who's just trying to follow God and you're, you're and, and you know, you've been called this, I get it, it's your day job, right? But you are throwing yourself into it fully. Um, if we're being realistic, I actually tried to compile a list um, of the things that I, I remember, and it's probably not complete, and, you know, I'm bad with details, and I didn't check with anybody. So uh, here are some of the things that I think you've done in your ministry, right? Uh, things that they've done. They, they were the past, Uncle Roland was the pastoral head. He headed all the pastors at FJKL, Church of Thousands, yep. Um, uh, and he was the head of missions at FJKL. He also... Uh, I believe started um, FGA Kale's orphanage and their drug rehabilitation. 
drug rehabilitation center. Uh, also, Malaysia's first Christian school in the country. Malaysia is not a Christian country, right? Uh, Auntie Eve started a Malaysia's first Christian daycare center, Noah's Ark, which these are not easy feats. They, if you think getting regulatory approval for stuff here in Australia is hard for churches, try a Muslim country because we can tell you stories about how difficult that is. They planted this church, obviously. They started our Aboriginal work in Shepparton, right? They planted and set on multiple churches, some of whom are coming for our services today to honor uh, Pastor Roland. Uh, and he founded IPEN, Impact Pastors, Impact Nation, which is a ministry to uh, pastors all around the world to encourage them so that they would, cont- instead of redoing the work from scratch, you encourage the pastors that's already doing good work in these countries so that they can continue going. And most notably, bringing unity to churches in Slovakia, um, uh, among other things. You know, as I reflect on all of that, you wouldn't believe it, but I reflect, reflect on all of these things, and still, Uncle Roland and Auntie Eve have a place in my heart not because of any of those things, but because of the impact that they have made on me. I can't, I can't discount how they, in my own life, took the time to introduce me to Christ. They sat down and they took the time, despite many PowerPoint slides of duties and many, many achievements that I'm sure are are around. Yep. Um, um, They took the time to not just show me who Jesus Christ was, the greatest love of my whole life, they actually then walked that journey together with me and mentored and discipled me. So I don't think I'm lying when I say that they have completely transformed my life and that almost every good work that I have done, I attribute to their influence. You know, I even met my wife in their church, (laughs) right? Like, I I can't. I I, I trace so many of the core values I have, the things that I do to actually my encounter with God, which was then brought by them. And so you might be sitting in this service and thinking, wow, it's really great that these two people have spent a lifetime serving God and others, and wow, what an impact. Um, But I know that if you were to talk to them, they would wish something else. In fact, they would wish something for you along the lines of what Paul says, which is this. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. That actually if you look, peel behind the the surface, and you look at their heart, the two of them, their, their heart is not to get a great ministry. Their heart is not to take the glory of for themselves. But they actually hope, they wish something for each of us. They do. They, they said they spend most of their life serving others. They don't just want to serve others for the sake of just meeting needs and leaving them alone. They're hoping to actually inspire people to imitate Christ as they have imitated Christ. So this is the part of the service, actually, in the last 10 minutes, where it's going to turn from being about Pastor Roland and Auntie Evelyn, who I honor with, with all of my heart, which I think they are such great examples, and we've had the privilege of living life and walking beside them for these 20-odd years. But I want to flip this. This is the part where the focus turns on you. You've taken the time. You've come into this service. You've heard us talk about a whole range of these things. It's a, it's, this Sunday has to count for you. You know, I asked Uncle Roland, uh, what, what would he like for his celebration service? And I don't even know if you remember what you exactly said to me. He said, 
whatever is best for the church. That was your answer to me. I went through a whole range of options with you, and you said to me, I wrote it down, whatever is best for the church. And so I'm going to do that. We're going to now, in the last nine minutes, talk about whatever is best for the church. I think whatever is best about the, for the church is that you be like Jesus. Is that we raise the bar for what ordinary people can do who are just disciples of Christ. I mean, most of us, right, would want to imitate Christ. I imagine most of us here would want to imitate Christ. I, I, I even reckon there would be some non-Christians. I reckon there'd be some people in Melbourne even who would go, yeah, Jesus Christ? Like, I wish I was like kind like Jesus Christ. I wish I had qualities of Jesus Christ. You know, like Jesus Christ would be somebody who, for the, even the average person, I reckon, have qualities worth imitating. But what does be like Jesus look like? How can we just like be like Jesus? Well, here's the big tip. Here's the thing that I've picked up from walking with Pastor Roland. It turns out we as human beings, we learn by following those around us. It's one thing for all of us to go, yes, we want to be like Jesus. Great, let's be like Jesus. Let's have more love. Let's have more humility. Let's, but if we surround ourselves with things that are not like Jesus, if we consume things that point us away from Jesus so that our heart and our soul is feeding on videos or, 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 or commentary of things that point us away from Jesus, we actually will struggle, really struggle to practically in our ordinary everyday lives to be more like Jesus. In fact, we know this is true for children who are growing up in homes, right? Your children learn mostly by following you. They pick up. How do you treat, how do you treat women in your house? How do, you, how do you handle life's disappointments? Whatever it is, they, they, they pick that up. Friends, friends learn from those around them. That's why the group of friends that you hang around with, they're, they're important, right? That's why at FGA, we have so many people wearing black puffy jackets, <laughs> right? Or like going to bubble tea. Okay, how many people have a black, right? So because people follow each other. People follow each other. It's just a matter. We imitate one another. It's just a human being trait. In fact, we could even take it further. Society copies each other. That's why every single generation, not just this current, modern, you know, Twitter, trending, uh, TikTok generation, every generation has had trends. Every generation of hairstyles that we all have, right? Of favorite music that we all did for our generation. Every generation. Why? Because we inherently learn by following those around us. So if we are to be more Christ-like, if we are to bring the values of heaven to be here on earth, then we need people we can imitate. People who we can live next to interact with, look inside, and even if they're not perfect, that we can see something of Christ in them. And then we say, hey, this part, it's really worth imitating. You know, we're in our series right now on Proverbs, right? We're looking at Proverbs 31. So we've had just two messages on it, and this is the third in the Proverbs 31 series. But it encourages us, Proverbs 31 encourages us to look at wisdom embodied. So it describes lady wisdom right at the end. And what does that look like? In fact, Proverbs 31 encourages us to not just look at wisdom, it encourages us to marry wisdom. Like she can be your life partner. To live with wisdom, not as a one-night stand where you just look for advice whenever you need it and then you just discard it. If you don't need any wisdom, you just, ah, whatever. 
but as a true life partner. And then Proverbs 31 then goes through all of these qualities that would be great to have in a life partner of wisdom, that you would walk with wisdom. All these today, our verse comes from this. Proverbs 31, verse 18. Wisdom perceives, she perceives that her merchandise is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. Wisdom discerns that within herself, there is something that is good for everybody. That the thing that she offers you, that the thing that is around actually is something that is worthwhile. It's profitable. It produces more. It, 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 it grows. It gains. It's not like depreciating. It's not, it is something worthwhile. She knows that what she has is helpful, good, worth investing in. And so that's the disposition I've seen with Uncle Roland and Auntie E. They have things in them. My goodness. Their merchandise, it's profitable. It has benefited me. It has grown not just our church, but the community of people that they've interacted with. You know, um, I remember uh, one of the main things Pastor Roland has taught me Actually, I'm not gifted to be a pastor, but one of the things, if we can just keep it real for a second, right? Like, I remember going with Pastor Roland as he would tutor me on how to be a pastor. Yep. She's like, Chris, come with me. We're going to go into these meetings. You just sit there. And then, so we'd have the briefing, right? I'd wake up in the morning, I'd do my GTD methodology. I'd be like, okay, we're meeting with these people. Here's the one line of the thing, right? That we got to, and we'd get into the meeting. And I'd be like, great, this is what we need to discuss with this guy. Bam, 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 bam. Right? And Pastor Roden would just spend ages chatting to the person. We're just talking. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at my notes. I know we've got another meeting to go to. I know what we're supposed to be discussing today. But we're talking about their kids. Then we're talking about how they came to Australia. Then we're seeing how is their, oh, their mother is not feeling well. Oh, we're gonna, and then we're going on and on and on and on. And I'm like, looking at Pastor Roden, I'm looking at the time. I know we have another appointment. Right? And he's like, just hold on, hold on. And he would coach me, actually, what, what I'm saying is what he has is profitable. Because I picked up from my time with Pastor Roland that people, um, he answered this question. He, to him, this was so important. Why would people care what you have to say unless they first know that you care? And so in every conversation that he went into, he doubled down on making sure he was relating to an actual person and that he would care for them the way God would care for them. And I found something precious in Uncle Rowan. So for us, the question really is, um, what is there in you that is worth imitating. I have picked up from Uncle Roland things that I try to now emulate and imitate. You've come to this service. I want to actually leave you with a bit of a challenge as we close. Inside each one of us, as ordinary people who are disciples of Christ, sits within you, just like this verse, just like this verse that we've got in Proverbs, something that is profitable. I want to put it to you, that thing that's profitable is Christ in you. Uh, maybe there's other things that's profitable, but they're not going to be as transcendent. They're not going to be as eternally helpful as Christ in you. But in this passage, you see that wisdom recognizes not only is there something profitable in you, she works day and night on it. My goodness that thing that is profitable in you, that, that ability to help the community, to make a difference, that, that caring part of you, that humble humility of servant leadership, whatever that is like Christ that is in you. Not only do you need to recognize that it is profitable, her lamp does not go out at night. You need to be hardworking, like Roland and Evelyn. 
You need to give it all that you've got. Because our society, our friends and our family, this world that is around us, needs more of Christ. And they're not going to get more of Christ if they're not surrounded by people who say, I've got something worth imitating. So why don't you imitate me as I imitate Christ? So you pick out things of Christ and you throw everything at it. And that would be the most worthwhile endeavor. That's what I've seen with Pastor Roland and Eve, that they have lived a faithful ministry season. They've thrown day and night their lives into it. And we, in many regards, we are the byproduct of that. And I think it would make them so happy if when we left today, not that they would get more accolades, but that we would imitate Christ, that we would recognize things in us that would be profitable for the kingdom of God. So I want to end with this question that all of us, if you've come into the service today, I want you to receive something that you would spend the next week thinking, hey, what is it? Is my merchandise profitable? What is, what is my best quality? Is my best quality the car that I own? or the status or the title that I have with my job? What is it? Are these things transcendent? Are they etern of eternal value? Are they really, am I building stuff that is really worthwhile? That's the challenge for today. That we would look at our own lives, look at our merchandise and go, all right, let's invest in the things that would actually bring us closer to Christ, that would inspire others to be closer to Christ. I, I, I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, believe that our society would be a better place if there was more Christ-likeness in us. And our society is only going to catch that if they can see real-world examples of that, of ordinary people who live out their discipleship of Christ just like Pastor Roland and Auntie Eve. Father, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for this service. And Lord, even as we finish, uh, I pray Lord, that you would challenge us, that we would take stock of what things we are investing in in our lives. Help us to be imitators of the good in other people as we aspire to imitate Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, uh, we've got a great guest speaker coming up next week. We've got Richard Beaumont. Uh, we're going to have uh, Roger and my wife come up and we've got a bunch of instructions. So please stay back. Uh, over to the two of you.